You almost wish for some snow to cover the ice because I've until oh. <laughs> Onward and upward. Oh, there they are. There they are. Let's get a little more light on them. Ooh, let's rock and roll. Okay, here we go. To the mountains. To the mountains. Well, more like the foothills. Foothills. Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? One, two, three, four. Yeah, your heart is a sun and it shines as it opens. Where your heart is a sun. There they are. All right, let's rock and roll. We're getting some vertical today, some baby vertical, but we're getting vertical today. Uh, the runner's knee is, oh, it just feels amazing. It actually, I, I wouldn't even call it runner's knee anymore. It just said it's normal, it's back to normal. So we're taking out the Skechers Speed Go Speed Trail Hypers with that Hyperburst midsole. Let's, uh, Let's lace it up here. Sun, and it shines, says it opens. Yeah, your heart is the sun, and it shines, as it opens. Where well, your heart is the sun, and it shines, says it opens. Yeah, your bones are the earth, and they sing with the mountains. Where well, your bones are the earth, and they sing. The mountain Yeah, your bones are the earth And they sing with the mountains Where your bones are the earth And they sing with the mountain Why would you look outside yourself When you have all of the world inside Why would you look outside yourself When you oh, have I haven't done vertical like, you know, decent vertical, I think since November. It might have been Argentina, honestly. Uh, so this is crazy, amazing to be back out here. Uh, I kind of forgot though that the snow, it hasn't snowed in Denver for about a month, but as you can see behind me, it's, there's still quite a bit of snow up here, more than I expected. And yes, it has turned to ice. So I'm watching my, my footing and just absorbing the beauty and just going vertical oh it's just so good to be back so all right we're doing well about halfway let's keep rolling you know you can feel it Almost went down. Whoa, it's icy. Uh, definitely, it's one of those situations where you almost wish for some snow to cover the ice. Because I've until oh, 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 oh. <laughs> don't worry, I've I've fallen before. As long as you're not going crazy fast, you're probably you're not gonna hurt yourself too bad. Too bad. Okay, dirt. Oh. <laughs> Having fun. Say, why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? Say, why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? Why would you look outside yourself when you have all of the world inside? All right, there they are, the Skechers Go Run Speed Trail 
hypers. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to get you my thoughts on these shoes in a second video, publishing later today. Uh, but, I, and I'll get you the stats for the run back at the house, uh, back at the studio. And at the, at the end of the day, uh, the legs were a little tired. They were a little tired after about six miles since this is my first really vertical run in a long, long time. So there they are, nice and muddy now. That classic uh, red dirt color from the Colorado dirt out here. Oh my goodness, we're back at the studio and I'm just in a little bit of shock, everyone, that I was able to go get some vertical gain today this quickly after the runner's knee. Now, I've been doing a lot of work in the gym, the PT work and the jumping and the all the plyometrics work, and so I felt confident that I could go do this. But frankly, I'm just ever grateful that I was able to get back out on the trails, out into the fresh air, and yes, uh, integrate, begin to integrate vertical gain into my marathon training for the Hamburg Marathon on April 19th. So today's run, eight miles, about 13 kilometers, 1800 feet of vertical gain and there it is on your screen in meters so nothing crazy but a solid day back into the vertical gain sphere of training and about you know averaging about 11 minutes a mile out there just kind of cruising now what is the end goal all right you always got to remember the end goal and work your way backwards so the end goal is a flat road marathon in europe in about uh, about 12 weeks approximately so uh integrating vertical gain uh, you know, if you want to call it hill running, mountain running, however you want to uh, phrase it, I'm going to say vertical gain. Uh, that is part of my strategy moving forward for staying healthy. Okay, let me explain a little bit. The Amsterdam Marathon was amazing. It was fun. It was fast. It was flat. Uh, but leading up to the Amsterdam Marathon uh, last, last fall, I was still doing quite a bit of vertical gain. I was running 14ers here in Colorado, 14,000 foot mountains. And the reason why was because I was walking the line between mountain racing and road racing, okay? Uh, I had qualified, yeah, I had just qualified for the World Mountain Running Championships. And so I, I knew that I still needed to continue to seek out vertical gain in my training while trying to prepare for a flat, fast road marathon. Uh, but I will say that lessons learned, I'm not, you know, we're always learning, right? You always got to be learning as a runner. So lessons learned going into Amsterdam. In retrospect, maybe I would have dropped back a little bit more off of the vertical gain uh, bandwagon in September and early October before I went over to Amsterdam to race. Also, I'm a big proponent of going into high altitudes to seek out and to recruit uh, those red blood cells. So red blood cells, they're flowing through our body and they help deliver oxygen to our muscles, the more red blood cells we have. So when you do high altitude training, that's why the elite marathon runners train at high altitude. That's why the Kenyans and Ethiopians dominate because they live and train at 8,000 feet above sea level. That's one of the reasons they, they dominate is they live and train at 8,000 feet above sea level. So I'm a big fan of vertical gain, of getting up into high altitude. However, going into Hamburg, I'm going to walk the line better and not seek out as much uh, mountain running. And so when you're out there on the trails, you're firing and you're using your muscles, your tendons, your ligaments, your bones in different ways. It gets different angles and different um, uh, torque that you're putting into your body that I think um, is a good way to st actually stay healthy. I know it's weird uh, because you think running in the mountains is harder, but actually it's a way to trigger um, the different <laughs> the different muscle groups in your body that you wouldn't normally use when you're training down here on the roads in the flats. Uh, so my strategy for Hamburg is two to three uh, trail and or mountain runs per month. Oh, it's hard for me to say that. So basically every other week, go up to the mountains for an easy day. And that's another nice thing about uh, vertical gain in your marathon training. It slows you down. It just slow, it, it's, it's like a reset button. It allows your body just to reset a little bit and have an easy day out there on the trails, not to mention the soft surface that you're running on rather than the hard surface of concrete or pavement in a lot of urban cities. All right, does that make sense? So that is my approach. That's my game plan for vertical gain in my marathon training block is to still have it, 
I'm still going to have it in the training block, but I'm going to reduce it pr a pretty good amount from, let's say, uh, before I was getting ready uh, for Amsterdam and, and New York to a certain extent, but the races were so close together. So um, it's still important. Just rein it in a little bit. Rein it in in order to stay healthy, at least as always, that is the goal, right? Arrive at the starting line as fit as possible, as fresh as possible, and as healthy as possible, okay? And that question of the day, do you plan out your vertical gain in your training blocks? Meaning, you know, we talk a lot about uh, our volume, we talk a lot about interval training, uh, threshold running, but do you actually plan out how many vertical feet or meters you want to accomplish in a given week. And whether it's for a marathon or not, that, you know, whatever it is, just let us know. Um, do you actually plan it out and think about it ahead of time? All right. Thanks for being here. I hope you enjoyed returning to the mountains a little bit. It was like, it was a throwback for me to like get the cameras up there and film for all of you. I totally, I loved it. I just loved it, but, but I'm not going to do it every, I'm not going to do it too, too much uh, in leading into Hamburg because I know I just got, I got to rein in that vertical gain until the summertime getting ready for uh, Pike's Peak. So, all right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. As always, we're going to toss it back on the right to a vlog that's all about uphill running technique. In case you're interested in learning more about my approach to improving my running form on the uphill. So that'll be on the right. And then on the left, yesterday's vlog, all about my six tips for getting ready for marathon racing. All right, everyone. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.